Hey, what's going on? Meteorologist Mike Linden here back with another tutorial. In this video, we are going to cover all of the features available to you in the layers menu in the My Radar app. So let's jump right in, shall we? First things first, we need to go to the layers menu. It's that stack of cards on the toolbar here. And when we tap on that, we can see a ton of options. Now, the best part about the My Radar app is the ability to completely customize your experience. If you want to look at storms, you can do that. If you want to check out active wildfires, you can do that too. If you want to track current earthquakes and even look at the plate boundaries on the planet Earth, you can do that as well. So let's take each layer piece by piece. At the very top of the layers menu, we have the high def radar menu. Now within this, of course, you tap on it. This will give you all of the options to customize what the radar looks like. Next, we have the forecast. That's that forecast panel at the very top of the app that will show you where you are in the world. And then if you want more information within the forecast panel, all you have to do is pull down on the forecast. You can scroll down. It will show you what the next 10 days looks like. You can drag this left and right to look at an hour by hour forecast. It will show you the air quality, the probability of rain. And then you can also change the 10 day forecast, whether you want to see temperatures or rain, that being precipitation, the wind forecast, the cloud cover, and then even more, we scroll down to the very bottom and you can see additional details, wind direction, the moon phase, sunrise, sunset, the feels like temperature. And then at the very bottom, you can see the historical temperature trends as well. So, so much in the forecast panel and you swipe back up in order to get back to the main screen. Next, we have winds. And within the winds layer, you have two options, winds at the surface and winds upstairs, if you will, the jet stream. In this case, it is at 500 millibars. Let's turn on the surface winds or keep it on the surface winds, turn on the winds layer. It will just take a second to load, being that it's a lot of data being pulled in. And what's really neat is we can see the direction in which the wind is flowing from. In this particular instance, you can see the wind coming in off of the Gulf of Mexico from the southwest, likely feeding those storms too over Mississippi. Now let's take a look at the jet stream winds because these are really neat. I want to show you this before we move on to the next feature. Go into the winds, toggle on jet stream winds, and then we will be able to see the air upstairs at 500 millibars. In this particular instance, man, look at that polar jet coming in across the northern tier of the United States. Some of the most striking imagery using the winds layer is available in the My Radar app. Next, we are going to move on to air quality. This is particularly useful when you are dealing with maybe a wildfire burning near you, or if you're under an inversion layer and you wanna know what the air quality is where you live. So let's turn on the air quality layer and go back into the map. It's for this particular instance. Let me turn off the alerts for just a moment. And you can see all of these overlays on the map. Let's go up here and look in Canada if you highlight over the uh, polygon there, notice in the top right hand corner, that will that's the map legend. And that in this particular case will show you that the air quality there is unhealthy in the orange that is unhealthy for sensitive groups. And then if we highlight over the yellow moderate air quality, so you can still see the air quality in the forecast panel at the very top. But if you'd like to customize what the radar view looks like, that's done in the air quality layer in the layers menu. Next, let's go to temperatures. We're going to toggle that on here. And this is going to show you two different kinds of plots on the map. Let's zoom in here to Maine. Right there in Portland, Maine, if we zoom in real tight, you can see that it says 77 degrees. Just off the coast, though, you can see the little waves on the circle there at 65. That's the temperature of the water. This is particularly useful if maybe you're heading to the beach and want to know what the temperature of the water is going to be like uh, for your beach vacation. We've covered this in another tutorial, but clouds is effectively the satellite layer where you're able to toggle between different satellite imagery. Get to see that, tap on the clouds menu there and you can toggle between visible, which is clouds, aviation, rainbow and water vapor. Next, weather alerts. Now we will cover this in an entire tutorial but just to show you here, if we toggle that on in the weather alerts menu, we have made it completely customizable for you. If you want to know whether or not you have a severe thunderstorm coming your way, whether or not there is a flash flood warning in your area, 
or even if there is a blowing dust advisory, air stagnation advisory in the special menu, a wind advisory, excessive heat, you can completely customize what the map looks like. This is really useful as well if you live in Australia. There at the very bottom of the weather alerts menu, you see BOM weather alerts, the Bureau of Meteorology. Let me zoom over, the, over to Australia so you can see. And we now have weather alerts completely customizable for the continent of Australia. How neat is that? So again, we will cover the weather alerts and how to completely customize that in another tutorial. Next, let's jump to the weather outlooks. If we tap on that in the layers menu, you have two options here. The next day snow forecast and the storm outlook. That of course is from the storm prediction center. Let's toggle that on, make sure that we have the weather alerts layer on. And for that, I'm gonna have to go back to the United States and this will plot the SPC's day one outlook on the map. So we have a slight risk for this particular day for the Central Plains. We also have another slight risk area here over portions of the Appalachian Mountain Range and up through the Northeast. So this is particularly useful if you are tracking severe weather. And of course, if you want to know what the snow forecast will look like too, that of course will show you the amount of snow that you are likely to see based on forecast information when you highlight over it. Next, this is a premium feature, the Hurricane Tracker. We will cover this in another tutorial, but with the Hurricane Tracker, you are able to track current storms, like this particular one. I believe that that is Calvin, yep, in the Eastern Pacific. It will show you the track from the National Hurricane Center, as well as the time of arrival. You can tap on the storm for more information. And with the Hurricane Tracker, it will also show you areas of interest on the map as well. There's so much more in the Hurricane Tracker that you can do, but again, we'll cover that in another tutorial. Next, let's jump to fronts and turn that on here. And that's going to turn on the weather fronts and pressure on the map. Of course, the uh, red L is representative of low pressure. The blue H is representative of high pressure. It will show you high pressure, low pressure, warm front, cold front, occluded, stationary, even boundaries and dry lines. This is particularly useful, again, if you are trying to track storms near you or want to know whether or not there's high pressure, low pressure, completely up to you in your area. Road weather, this is a really, really cool feature in the app. Now, in the free version of the app, you are limited to the 60 mile radius but there is a premium upgrade where you can view the entire continental United States. But for this instance, we'll turn on the 60 mile radius, make sure that the road layer is on, it is. So we're here in Orlando, Florida. And if I zoom in here and you highlight over a particular road, you can see whether the road is dry, whether it's previously wet, whether it's frozen over, if there's snow. This is so, so useful whether or not you are commuting or if you are planning your next road trip with my radar we will talk more about the route cast feature in another tutorial but in this particular instance we can zoom in on here to this patch of i-75 in florida with a big storm passing over the top of it notice it says that it is wet with patches so not completely inundated and you can really zoom in here again to show you what sections of the roads are wet which are dry this is so, so useful. Again, if you are commuting, planning a road trip, what have you, again, we will cover even more features for travel in another tutorial. We've got the photos layer, which enables you to share pictures right into the My Radar app. So I've got it turned on here. And there we go. We got a neat photo from a user here in Florida. A couple of them, man, look at that. That is a neat photo of a hot air balloon in Four Corners, Florida. All you have to do with the photos layer is from the main screen there, tap on the camera button in the bottom right hand corner. And with that, you can upload photos either through the app or from your camera roll right into the app. From here, we can like the photo by tapping on the little heart. You can leave a comment. So much cool stuff that you can do in the photos layer. That's a really fun feature, particularly if you are tracking a storm coming near you. Next, let's jump to aviation. And within the aviation layer, you have a ton of options in here. Sigmets, airmets, temporary flight restrictions, echo tops, and even a flight plan where you can type in the tail number of a plane and the My Radar app will add that plane's path onto the app. This is really useful 
If you're maybe sitting at an airport wondering where the heck is my plane, you can see exactly where it is on the app. Next, orbital tracking. We are so excited about this feature and this takes us beyond the surface level and takes us into outer space. Of course, we have successfully launched several satellites here at MyRadar. We've used this feature here to track where our satellites are. But in this particular instance, let's track the International Space Station. All you have to do is tap on the object in space that you would like to track. You can see right there, orbital tracking, ISS. And if we zoom out here, we will see it on the map. Oh, there it is. There's the line. But let's find where the ISS is. There it is right over top of Africa. If we zoom in here, you'll actually see it moving. There we go. And it will give you the latest uh, location as to where that object is. If we zoom out here, you can see kind of a spotlight around it. That's everything within its view in this particular instance. Pro tip, tap on the map icon here, and we're going to change to globe. How about that? That's really cool to be able to track objects in space there. Another pro tip for you here within the orbital tracking layer, if we go back to the layer, right at the very top, project an additional orbit. This is going to show you on the map a dashed line. That is effectively the next orbit for the object that you are tracking. So in this case, it'd be the ISS, so we can see where it is likely to head to next. So if you are a photographer looking to get a photo of a passby, you gotta have a good camera to capture the ISS, but you'll be able to see exactly where it is to be prepared for that next pass by. Really, really neat. So the next layer in the app is the video storm chasers layer. And what this is, is you toggle it on and you can see on the map, a live stream from a chaser on the ground. This is particularly useful during a severe weather event. During our live streams with the video and meteorology team, we rely on these storm chasers out in the field to show you at home exactly what is heading your way. This is very useful for ground truth, particularly when you are tracking tornadoes. And of course, it's really neat to see it on the map, a placer marker where those chasers are at that very moment. Next, let's move on to earthquakes. This is a really awesome feature that we're really proud of. We'll toggle that on, but before that, we'll go into the menu here and there's a lot to customize. You can look at all earthquakes that occur around the world. You can look at ones of particular magnitude, or you can sort it through the time period, the past month, past week, past day, past hour. And then right at the very bottom, plates and faults. We're gonna to toggle that on and I'll show you. That is going to show you the fault lines and the plate boundaries on the planet Earth. That's really cool. So let's turn on the magnitude 2.5 earthquakes and above, and we will look at earthquakes over the past week. Hit done. The layer is on. We'll zoom out here. And there we go. Don't be scared. I mean, earthquakes are happening all the time, but look at that. We can see the plate boundary just off the coast of the Northwest here. And what's really neat, there's the San Andreas fault line, mind you. Going into Los Angeles here, let's tap on this earthquake and you can see more information from the USGS about this particular quake. So magnitude 3.0, you can see it's in depth, it's a gap, really, really neat stuff, the time at which it happened and its location. And of course, it's plotted all on the map. You can see that blue line there. That is the San Andreas Fault in this sense, but that is the earthquake layer. Really, really neat. You can turn that up, of course, the opacity so we can really see those fault lines. Gosh, look at all those earthquakes around the Ring of Fire, huh? That's magnitude 2.5 at that instance, but you can filter those out as well. So next, let's move on to the wildfires layer. This is particularly useful during wildfire season and really any time of year to track a wildfire burning near you. So if we go into the wildfires layer, you have the option to toggle between all and large wildfires. If we just look at large wildfires, or all of them rather, there's a lot of wildfires currently burning in this particular instance. But if we go back in and toggle it to large, well, it will narrow those down. It just so happens as we are tracking this, there's a lot of wildfires burning in Canada. So check this out. Let's go back in and we're going to turn on smoke hazards and hotspots. Hotspots is using infrared satellite imagery to find points where there might be wildfires that aren't even being tracked just yet, which is really, really neat. And then smoke hazards as well, which will show you where the smoke is blowing from those wildfires. So we turn that on and you can see the smoke overlay here. So this particular fire that's burning in Halifax, 
there's heavy smoke all around it. If you highlight over the smoke hazard, you can see in that map legend there in the top right what is going on. But let's zoom on in here to this particular storm. I've got the hotspots feature turned on, and how neat is that? You can see the front of the fire where there are spots most bright, that being the yellow color there, as to where there could be new hotspots sparking up right now. If you want more information about a particular wildfire, you tap on the wildfire icon, it will show you the name of the storm, the status of it, the size of it, and what agency is reporting that particular wildfire. And then finally, in the app, we have the power outages layer right at the very bottom. We'll toggle that on, and this is going to show you power outages. As of right now, it's just based in the United States, but let's zoom on in here and we can see different counties in different colors. If you tap on a power outage, that will give you more information. So in this particular instance in Pickens County, there is roughly 1% of customers that are without power. That's that blue color. Things do ramp up yellow, orange, and red. We'll tap on the yellow one here. And in this particular county, there's a higher percentage of folks without power, that being 11.6% of total customers. You can see the power company that is providing power to those customers, how many are affected. And we can tap on this particular county in Kemper County, the red color, 64% of customers are without power. This is a really useful feature, particularly if you wanna track severe weather coming your way to kind of see historically what those storms have done as they continue their way potentially toward where you live. This is again, a really useful feature that was much requested from folks. So that's gonna do it for this tutorial. We do offer premium features in the app to take things to the next level, but the bulk of what I just showed you there in the layers menu are available totally free when you download the MyRadar app. Follow My Radar on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.